Welcome back to NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session, we have introduced several axioms which are necessary for understanding the Shapley value. In fact, we made a statement regarding the Shapley value. So, let, let us start with the theorem and we will try to prove this. This is due to Shapley. So, there is exactly one mapping phi from r to n minus 1 to r n that satisfies axiom 1, 2, 3. Okay. This the, the, the map is given by phi i v is nothing but summation over c contained in n minus i mod c factorial n minus mod c minus 1 factorial by n factorial into the marginal contribution of i. So, remember the axioms that uh, we wanted is the following thing, the, basic, the axioms are symmetry, linearity, and carrier edge or even null player we can say. Okay. With these axioms we need to show that this phi i v is the unique allocation rule satisfying these axioms. So, let us uh, proceed for the proof. The proof is divided into two parts. In the part 1, we show that the mapping given in the theorem satisfies the axioms. Okay. And then the part 2 we, two, we prove the uniqueness. Okay. We separate uh, these two parts and then let us start with the part 1. This is first we start with the linearity. Linearity. So, what we need to show you that phi i of p v plus 1 minus p w where v and w are 2 cooperative games and p is a number between 0 and 1 then what we need to show is phi p into phi i v plus 1 minus p into phi i w. So, this is what we need to show it. So, let us uh, this thing by definition for any coalition p v plus 1 minus p w of this c is nothing but p v c plus 1 minus p w c. Now, look at the formula for corresponding to p v plus 1 minus p w. So, this is nothing but summation the mod c factorial into mod n minus mod c minus 1 factorial by n factorial into p v plus 1 minus p w of c union i minus p v plus 1 minus p w of c. So, uh, here this c is contained in the summation is taken over n minus i. So, let us uh, basically we need to write down the 
values of this. So, that is going to be same as summation C contained in n minus i mod C factorial into n minus mod C minus 1 factorial by n factorial. If we write it that will be P V C plus 1 minus P W C ok C is basically C union I here C union I minus P V C plus 1 minus P W C. Now, I can uh, separate these two things this term and this term and this term and this term. So, if I write it separately that becomes P V C V C union I minus V C plus 1 minus P W C union I minus W C. Now, because summation over a finitely many numbers, so therefore, uh, this simply becomes summation C is contained in n minus i of the mod C factorial into n minus mod C minus 1 factorial by n factorial into P comes outside here V C union i minus V C that is the first term the second term corresponds to 1 minus p into again c contained in n minus i mod c factorial n minus mod c minus 1 factorial by n factorial into w c union i minus w c. Now, if we note down this particular term is nothing but the phi i v this second term is phi i w of course, with a multiplicating factors p and 1 minus p. So, this for this is nothing but p phi i v plus 1 minus p phi i w. So, this shows that the mapping phi i is linear. Once we know that this is linear, so let us look at the next thing. the carrier axioms. Okay. Suppose D is a carrier of the game N V. Now, therefore, V C is nothing but V C intersection D for every C contained in R. Now, we also have that V i is 0 for all i outside d and V of d is nothing but V of n. So, these are all there. Now, if we apply this into the Shapley value this thing in fact, it is uh, straightforward. to verify phi i v is 0 for all i in n minus d that is outside d. It is directly we can use the take i n not in n minus d and then substitute there and then we are going to get this directly. Now, of course, then what we need to show now finally is that for carrier D we need to show I belongs to D phi I V is nothing but V D. Again this comes from the fact that if we sum all the phi i's this phi I V over I in n this is nothing but V n which is same as V D because we have D, uh, V n and V D are same that is uh, this thing. Okay. This actually just substitutions and we can because this also comes from the fact that this is there. Okay. So, we can actually complete this thing. Of course, we have uh, missed to see one more thing is that the symmetry 
which we should have done first. So, symmetry is basically if you really look at it in any correlation phi i v if you take it okay, it depends only on number of players in a correlation C and whether C contains I or not it does not matter really. Okay. So, uh, therefore, the relabeling has no effect on the value therefore, the symmetry holds. Okay. If we really look at it whether I belongs to C or not that is all is metric because by the formula it depends on VC union I minus VC and you are taking the relations and then it depends only on the number of uh, this thing. So, when I relabel the same set of things keep coming so therefore, the symmetry automatically holds. So, this proves the fact that the 3 axioms are satisfied by the Shapley value. Now, let us uh, go for the proof of 2. Okay. So, what we will do here is the following thing. The proof really depends on let us look at the n z b a cooperative game that assigns what 0 to every correlation C. Okay. So, if I take that one that means we are really considering a 0 game in a sense every correlation has the 0 value then what we we get here is phi i z is going to be 0 this is by the very definition of uh, the carrier axiom. The carrier axiom tells us that if it is a 0 game then phi i z is always 0 for every i that is uh, one point. Then the other point is that the linearity if you take any 2 games phi i P V plus 1 minus P W we know that the linearity says that P into phi I V plus 1 minus P W. So, that means the map phi I is a linear if for example, if a phi I if a phi I is a map satisfying the axioms the linearity carrier and then the efficient the symmetry then what we have is that this is a linear map. Now, Therefore, the mapping satisfying the axioms is linear. So, now once we know that the mapping rule allocation scheme is a linear function over the space of all cooperative games, then the way to see that this is a unique uh, the Shapley value is the only map satisfying those 3 axioms what we can really do is that how the this allocation depends on a basis. Now, let us look at the this thing, ln let us say this denotes all subsets of n. Okay. In fact, the cardinality of this L n is 2 power n minus 1. Therefore, R mod L n this is the is a 2 power n minus 1 dimensional space basically vector space. So, this space contains all the cooperative games. Okay. So, now let us consider the following simple game let us say D is a subset of N 
and then define n w d as following thing w d c is 1 if d is contained in c otherwise is 0. Not. So, now how many such games are there for each subset of n we have one game like this and therefore there are uh, 2 power n minus 1 thing. So, therefore there are 2 power n minus 1 such games. We now see uh, we now show that this forms a basis. If we see that this forms a basis then we are done. So, how we can show this? So, because these are all 2 power n minus 1 sets if we can show that they are uh, linearly independent that means then we are done. So, let us show that the set of all these Two power n minus one games is linearly independent. So what it means is that if these are all linearly independent, how do we? What we need to show? So let us take uh, d one is one correlation and d two is another correlation. Let us uh, take it and consider the games w d one n w d one n w d two say d1 is not equals to d2 ok. So, uh, I am just showing that two such correlations I take and two such games and we need to show that this a linear combination of these games. So, that is a p w d1 plus let us say 1 minus p w d2 is a the 0 game then more than uh, p here let us put alpha and beta then alpha is equals to beta is equals to 0 this is what we need to show. So, in fact it is not really hard to verify this one because alpha w d 1 will become ok let us see for any c. alpha w d 1 c plus beta w d 2 c is nothing but alpha into ok. So, let us uh, it depends on multiple things. So, let us go back once again to define if d is contained c it is 1. So, this is basically 1 ok let me write it uh, the best way is to put it this is 1 if d 1 contained in c similarly d 2 c is 1 if d 2 is contained in c and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, therefore, whenever d 1 is contained in c and uh, because d2 and d1 are not same there are certainly a subset c choose basically c such that d1 is contained in c but d2 is not contained in c then this particular uh, value will be simply alpha into 1 plus beta into 0 that is alpha now, we have assumed that if this is 0 that for any correlation this has to be 0 therefore, this has to be 0. So, now only thing that I need to show is that such a c can be obtained, but that is automatically possible because d 1 and d 2 are at different sets. So, we can always choose some c which is contained in d 1, but not contained in uh, does which uh, we can see we can choose c containing d 1, but does not contain d 2 such a c we can always choose. So, therefore, we can say that this alpha has to be 0 if this 
is a 0 game. Similarly, beta can be made 0, the same argument. Okay. I will choose now uh, equation C which contains D2 but not D1. Okay. So, therefore, beta has to be 0. Therefore, alpha W D1 plus beta W D2 is 0 implies alpha is equals to beta is equals to 0. That means this is a linearly independent set. Okay. So, in fact, I need to say something more before I say that this is a linearly independent. I have proved this only for 2 sets, but I can do it with any sets, any subsets I can take it, any number of uh, subsets d1, d2, d3, dk which are all different and then if their linear combination is 0, then I can show that the corresponding coefficients have to be 0. So, therefore, this is linearly independent. Now, note that how many such games are there? Okay. So, because for each subset d, I can define one game and there are total the 2 power n minus 1 games. Therefore, there are 2 power n minus 1 such games and all of them are independent. The set is an independent set. Now, this is a 2 power n minus 1 dimensional linear space and therefore, this is a basis. Now, from a linear algebra, we can easily see that any linear function on a vector space, if it fixes the values on its basis, then such a linear transformation is unique. So, therefore, to prove the uniqueness, it is enough to show that the mapping fixes its values on these simple games. So, that is all we need to show. So, let us start looking at it. So, cho choose D a subset of N, we have this game W D. So, phi i of this game, what will be this one? Now, remember this is where we use the carrier axiom because D is a carrier here, this we can easily verify that this value is going to be 1 by mod D. Okay. Now, we can verify from the formula in theorem that the value coincides with this. So, Basically, what we need to show is that going back to this one, we have this formula, this formula just use instead of we use the simple game WD and show that phi i WD is nothing but 1 by mod D. Once you show that this becomes a 1, it is 1 by mod D that means this whatever this map whatever is defined this is fixing the values on the Shapley value on the simple games which is the basis. Therefore, any linear transformation which fixes the value its values on the basis has to be unique and therefore, this proves that this formula is the only map satisfying this theorem, this uh, three axioms. So, that in that way the value is the unique function satisfying these things. So, this is uh, known as the Shapley value. 
in fact it has uh, multiple ways you can do it. Let me write it here phi i v is defined as summation c contained in n minus i mod c factorial into n minus mod c minus 1 factorial by n factorial v c union i minus v c. So, basically this is a average of a marginal contribution that a player is contributing to a correlation c and any correlation c outside this n minus i can be chosen in these many ways mod c factorial into n minus mod c minus 1 factorial by n minus n factorial. This is the number of ways that you can choose any correlation C not containing I. Therefore, the a player's marginal contribution for a correlation C is given by this and now its weighted sum or expectation is nothing but the Shapley value. This is a useful interpretation which helps sometimes. Okay. So, the another very important thing that uh, we can say here is that there are uh, under cert for certain class of games Shapley value belongs to core. Okay. So, uh, what is such games? These are these are known as a convex games. So, the convex game are uh, satisfying the following condition. So, V of D union I marginal contribution a player gives the marginal contribution of a player I is always bigger than marginal contribution of the same player for another correlation whenever C is contained in D is contained in n and of course i not in d. So, that means what if you take any correlation c and another correlation d which is st strictly bigger than c then the marginal contribution that the player i who is not in d is contributing to c is less than his marginal contribution to d. That means for larger groups his contribution marginal contribution is higher. So, once you define this convex games what we can show is that for convex games Shapley value belongs to core. So, we will not uh, prove this one, but this is a very important result and in the next session we will go to another important concept in cooperative games which is called nucleus we will stop with this today. Thank you.